today? I'm wonderful. How are you? I'm doing good. So I'm new in my role, as you know, just the last couple of months, and I've been hearing about this multi-sector plan on aging, but I don't actually know that much about it, and I'd love to hear um, more about what's happening. So multi-sector plans on aging, are, are, it's a kind of a recent best practice. Uh, probably the best example is, is the one that California developed, but it's a long-term plan that really helps set a vision for the state of Oklahoma. Uh, that's really the goal, to set a vision around aging and what aging looks like and what aging well looks like in Oklahoma. So uh, when you talk about aging well, it makes me think about maybe about services, but also maybe about other things uh, that people need to, to live well as they're growing older. Is that right? You're right. And I think that's why the multi-sector aspect of it is so important. We want to bring in traditional and non-traditional stakeholders to really hear their voice on what it means, uh, you know, when you're looking at workforce, what does it mean to have a, a good qualified aging workforce? When you're looking at retirement and trying to live in the community as long as you can, as independently and you know thrive in the community, what does that look like? And what supports and services can we provide that will help uh, help people thrive in their community? So when you say multi-sector, what other sectors might be uh, invited to kind of participate in developing a plan? Uh, I mean, it, large employers would, would be a good sector because they employ older people. Um, you know, the Department of Transportation, you know, a lot of people uh, in our communities lack transportation and that's something that, that prevents them from having access to, you know, other people, connections, sometimes uh, to get to their, their doctor's appointments. Um, uh, Department of Mental Health, we know that there's rising uh, behavioral health issues among older populations. So bringing these different aspects of aging together to really try to get ahead of them and see how, you, how we can prevent um, bad issues from happening and, and help people thrive in their community, that's really the goal. So it sounds like other state agencies, but maybe also local organizations, nonprofits, um, a variety of different kinds of groups, maybe faith community, other kinds of groups that may come together to help. Is there something about this timing uh, for the state of Oklahoma that causes the development of a plan, a multi-sector plan on aging to be important right now? I, I do want to pay homage to people that have, that have provided plans and, and uh, you know, we, in 2019, there was a long-term services and supports report that came out that provided, a, you know, a, a lot of great strategies for, for moving Oklahoma forward. So there's been a lot of people who have invested in trying to create strategies and come together um, now, I think, it, the, you know, coming out of COVID, uh, we kind of have, a, you know, some different things that have happened. So this, this allows us to take a look at what's right for Oklahoma, given uh, what's happened in the recent past, and, and really raise the watermark for uh, people who will uh, understand what this plan is and where it can take Oklahoma, and to really get behind it. So we're really hoping to engage all of our stakeholders in the community, because aging truly is something that impacts every single person. Whether you're a caregiver or you have parents who are aging, um, you know, we're aging, our children are gonna age. So it's, it's something that impacts every single citizen of Oklahoma. And we wanna create an infrastructure that supports people uh, to thrive and, and do well in their community. Well, and that makes sense. And I come out of the child services world, but I heard a statistic the other day about that by 2030, we're expecting to have more folks 65 and older in Oklahoma than we do children. Is that is that what you're hearing as well? Yes, that's a, a statistic that, that keeps, the, the, it's a reason why this is so important. Um, that, uh, you know, older people outnumbering children is something that's never happened before. So this will be the first time something like that's ever happened before. So part of, I think, the impetus for doing this plan now is planning ahead. Like this is something that Oklahoma is going to face. It's something our communities are, are going to face that's new, and planning ahead gives us a good a good shot at, at, at um, you know looking at what services and supports and partners that we need to engage to make sure that we're prepared. Well, and I loved your language at the beginning of this conversation around living well, aging well, not just sort of surviving the process of aging, but actually really stepping into a community that's that's ready for that. So, Jeremy, how can people become involved with this if they're interested in? keeping up with the plan or maybe even participating in the formation of the plan? How, how can they engage? That's a great question. I know we've, we've, uh, we're working really hard to try to reach as many stakeholders as we can. We're working right now to develop a website 
um, here at uh, DHS that people can come to and sign up for those listening sessions and also sign up for updates if they want to continue to be informed about what we're doing to move forward. That'll be kind of how they can connect with us and we'll push out the updates as, as we move forward. So some good ways to be able to keep up with the movement, but also to speak into it. And th those opportunities are coming soon. Absolutely, because we really need to hear from everybody about where they feel we are and where the gaps are, and where we want to be, because that's going to help us develop the strategies and the pathways uh, to build a better Oklahoma for, for future uh, older Oklahomans. Okay. When you said the public uh, could participate in these listening sessions, um, are you looking for folks that are in that aging population or folks who are caregivers or what kinds of uh, I, folks would you like to have? I think any of those, those folks. I think I mean, ob we definitely want to hear from people who are, you know, who are older um, because their voice matters. And, and these are for services and supports that could impact them right now. But also from people who are planning ahead, um, people who are wondering what it's going to be like to age when, you know, 10 or 20 years from now, people who are caregivers. Um, all of those people, I think we want to we want to hear from, um, and get their perspective about where we are, where we want to be, what's the vision for the future, and then help us develop uh, pathways to get from where we are to where we want to be as well, a state. It sounds like a cool project, and so I'm glad to learn more about it, and also to support uh, you and the other folks that are involved in carrying this out. And so, thank you for uh, giving me a little bit more information about it. Thank you, Dr. Deb.